Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and this week I've caked us breakfast. Giant French toast. I hope you're hungry. To make this cake, I prepared six pounds of my ultimate vanilla batter, but not without my sugar and spice mix. I made this mixture for the first time in my peach blueberry upside down cake and I swirled it into the vanilla batter. And it is so delicious and French toasty. If you want to know exactly how I did that, you can check out my blog. I removed it from its pan and then I leveled the top with a ruler and a serrated knife. Normally I always cut the caramelization off the bottom of vanilla cake especially. Uh, but this time I'm going to leave that thin caramelization. Because when I decorate this and I make it look like French toast, I don't want the bottom to just look white. French toast, you flip it and it's fried on both sides. Use the caramelization to my advantage. You have been coming up with a lot of excuses to leave caramelization. You know, I think so. I think I'm just tired of saying caramelization. 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 <laughs> the next thing I want to do is carve this square cake to look like a slice of bread. So you know how a slice of bread, well when you buy like a loaf, like a North American loaf of bread, the top sort of is like rounded and then the bottom is more square. So I want to recreate that rounded top. That would be the part of the bread that baked up over the pan. For this I'm just using a five inch round cake pan, laying it on top and cutting away the two top corners from my square cake. I did some research about French toast yesterday. Tell me about it. It's not French. Yeah, I knew that. No, it's just walking around like it's bougie, but it's not. <laughs> it's not French at all. The next thing I want to do is simple syrup this cake. So Sir Squeeze came along and helped me. It was a very light day for him. Then he went and had brunch with his friends. He said he was craving French toast. <laughs> he hangs around with a bunch of other bottles, yeah. It's now time for me to crumb coat. Oh, what am I doing? Excuse me. It's now time for me to crumb coat and chill. I still love it. I really, really do. I crumb coat my cake very lightly. Thinnest crumb coat possible, because I don't want to see a white line of buttercream when I cut this cake. Deceptive it's a deceptive crumb coat. It's an undercover crumb coat. <laughs> so I'm just crumb coating the top and the sides of my cake and putting it in the fridge to chill. I need to color some fondant for my French toast. I'm looking for that, you know, that egg mixture yellow of French toast. So I need to make some of that to cover the top of my French toast. And then I need a more brown colored fondant for the crust of the bread, the sides of the French toast. And then I mix in some spices into my fondant. Never done that before. So I mix some cinnamon and freshly grated nutmeg into my fondant because I wanted to see speckles of spice. And I also want us to taste it when we're eating the cake. That sounds so good. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's time to get into rolling this fondant because believe it or not, even though I crumb coated this cake, I didn't ice it. I don't want to see a white line of buttercream. I lay it onto the cake and smooth it down with a fondant smoother. Now I'm going to trim the excess away that hangs over the edges, flush with the cake itself. Guys, this is the last call for this month's cake tea in the Cake Tea Club. If you sign up now, you will still get this tea which says, good things come to those who cake. You know what good things come to those who cake? Cake. There are links below if you wanna sign up. Now I'm going to roll the crust colored fondant out, my brown fondant. Now I'm gonna cut that fondant into two bands that I will wrap around the perimeter of my cake. It's time to pick them up carefully and line them around the cake or like press them up around the side of the cake. I add one band of brown fondant and then the other, smooth it down, trim your fondant bands where they meet at the indent of your slice of bread. What's your favorite breakfast? So French toast is my husband's favorite. He loves French toast. I think I would choose blueberry pancakes. Oh, I love blueberry pancakes. I really love blueberry pancakes. I had blueberry pancakes last night. It depends. If I'm gonna save, so wait a minute, you had it for dinner? I made two. 
two jumbo pancakes. Two jumbo pancakes. Okay. Extra blueberries. And then I put like Nutella in between and made like a sandwich. It was like a pizza. And, and you ate the whole thing? Yeah. And that was your just your nighttime snack? Yeah. At what time was it? Time. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> All right, good. Good. So it's 2019 and Orhan still has the metabolism of 10 <laughs> horses. Great. The next thing I want to do is paint the crust. Even when you fry French toast, even though you don't fry the sides, you know, they get a little bit of butter on them. They get a little more glistening. So that's what I'm going for. For this, I'm using a mixture of buttercup yellow and ivory. I paint this mixture onto the crust of my French toast, not just on the sides, but making sure to paint it on top. The very thin, thin area of the top of the strip of the crust. So far it's one slice. Of it's bread. still one. And it's at this point it's only like toast. It hasn't been Frenched. Now I need to make this toast French, officially. And I have brulee fondant directly in the past, but that gives more of a look of, I don't know how to describe it. It makes it look baked. It makes it look more baked. You're, you're right, thank you, Orhan. <laughs> but with French toast, what I love most about French toast, it, it's not like a pancake. It doesn't get a smooth colored surface, right? Like it kind of has texture. And what I ended up deciding was to sprinkle brown sugar onto the top of the French toast. And then I used a cake board to press that brown sugar flat onto the surface. But I'm not completely coating the surface. And now it's time for Mr. Burns to work his magic. So you burn the sugar? I burn the sugar, not the fondant. Oh. And I was worried, even as I did this, I was like, what if this doesn't work out the way I think? But it did, and not only did it, it smelled amazing. Yeah. Cody, I think you're gonna have some Cody sound effects in this video. <laughs> Please share this video with someone that you've been meaning to go to brunch with. I feel like I don't brunch enough. That's going to be a new decision. Yeah. To brunch more. I really want French toast now. I know, we should have French toast for lunch. Yeah. I mean, you're having pancakes as a late night snack, so I feel like French toast for lunch is totally normal. Now I'm going to make the topping for this beautiful French toast. The first thing I do is peel and core and cut my apples into wedges. And along with my apples, I have some berries to add to my compote. So I have blackberries, raspberries, and strawberries. And I also have some spices, some cinnamon sticks, and I'm gonna peel a little bit of fresh ginger and cut up a few slices, just to spice it up. Is so it's ginger in this cake? Yes. Nice. There's ginger in the compote on top of the French toast. I love ginger. Oh, and nutmeg, of course. I have to use nutmeg because it's the spice of Grenada, so. If I use spices, that's in there. The first thing I wanna do to make the compote is cook my apple slices or wedges with a little bit of sugar, and I'm just gonna let them cook for about five to 10 minutes. They will soften and lose their shape. That's all part of it. It also depends on the type of apple you use. At this point, you can add in your spices, your cinnamon sticks, your nutmeg, and your ginger slices. This will allow it to sort of absorb all that gingery goodness. The next thing I wanna do is add my strawberries to the pot. Obviously, I've washed and cleaned the strawberries and I've hulled them, which is taking the green stem off. I don't know why it's called that. We'll yeah. have to research. Hulling is like a, a bear attached to it, right? No, that's mauling. Oh, that's mauling. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, when my compote is almost ready, I'm going to add my raspberries and blackberries. I add these at the end because they're already such like tender berries. They don't really need to be cooked a lot. I'm more adding them for the, the color and the vibrancy that they bring. Once my compote is done, I'm going to pour it out into a heat proof bowl to cool completely. I like to leave my spices in even while it's cooling and when it's done, I just pull them out. Unless, of course, you like to eat whole cinnamon sticks. Maybe that's your thing. <laughs> I'm going to cut my slice in half. I am using a couple more toppings. Who eats yes. plain French toast? Nobody. Eats Nobody. French. No. If you eat plain French toast, leave a comment below and we will say a prayer for you. We will send you our thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Maple syrup, of course. You have to put maple syrup on French toast, and I'm Canadian, so I really have to. 
I'll get in trouble if I. They send bears to maul me if I don't. <laughs> it's also that's the Canadian punishment. Um, and, and then they say sorry. And then they say sorry. <laughs> then I'm going to top this toast with a nice pile of my apple and berry compote. Mm. Now I want to add some more fresh berries, just a few few more strawberries, blackberries, and raspberries for even more color and even more tartness on top of our sweet French toast. Of course I need a giant dollop of buttercream as whipped cream. I looked at my French toast and I knew it needed one more thing. So I sifted some icing sugar on top. Okay? I feel like that's very brunchy. We can't have these kind of interviews before lunch. I know, it's rude. Why are we doing this to ourselves? Yeah. New rule for 2019. But you know why this is actually going to be a really good year? Why? Because what are you about to hit? I can't even, I don't even want to say it out loud. <laughs> we are about to hit 4 million. That's incredible. And we're very, very excited and very grateful to all of you who still watch me babble about cakes. So thank you so much for subscribing. And if you're here today and you're not subscribed, then join us. There's a button for that. When the time comes, we'll be hosting a live stream party with tons of sweet giveaways to give to all of you. Unfortunately, the French toast cake is not one of them. We already ate it to ourselves. So we will see you all at the party. Tell everyone to subscribe. That way the party will be sooner. Thanks for joining me for brunch today, guys. Please check out the lotus cake and the breakfast sandwich cake over at Step by Step, and I will see you next week.